Welcome to Access Action Queries. I'm Trainer Lori. What are action queries? These are queries or saved searches or questions that will change the data somehow. Uh, we are going to look at the delete, the make table, the append, and the update queries. Action queries must start as a select query. So even though you'll find them on the Queries Tools Design tab, you must start as a select query first. And you must run them to make the change. If you'll notice, all of the action queries have an exclamation point in them. And that's why, because you have to run them to make them work. We're going to look at archiving records. Let's say that we have an employee that leaves. If we take their file and throw it away, <laughs> if they try to come back, oh, we're going to have to recreate their file. However, if we take their file and they leave, but instead of throwing it away, we simply archive it. We can put it in off-site storage or in-site storage. And when they come back, we can simply bring the record back. We're going to look at three different kinds of queries. The CYA or GIC table. I want to make a table to put the records in, just in case. GIC, just in case. Then I want to get rid of them. Then I would use a delete query for that. And then w if you want to bring them back for some reason, we would use the append query the make table query. In other words, we want to do a copy and paste. We want to make a duplicate of the data. So we're going to take the original data and we're going to create a new table with a copy of the data in it. Now we don't want all the data because we just want those records that are discontinued. So that's why it shows fewer blocks. We'll go to create and then you can create the query however you like to do it. I prefer using query design view and it's a select query, remember? And in this case, we want all the products. Now we want to see all the fields, so we use the star to bring it down. I just double clicked on the star and it brought that field down, all the fields in the products table. But I don't want all the records, so I'm going to do a criteria search. I just want to find those that are discontinued. And it's a, a yes, no option or true, false. So I'm going to say true, discontinued. However, because I have the star that shows all the records here, I do not want to show them again do not show duplicate records. So remember, whenever you have the star, be sure to uncheck. Star check. <laughs> now we're going to change it from a select query to a make table query. The second we click make table, it says, what do you want to call this new table? And notice you have the option of putting it in the current database or another database. So if you want really truly off-site sto storage, you can put it into another database. And then click OK. And does it look like anything happened? You won't see anything except that that goes away, that sign. So how do I know if it happened? Well, it didn't happen because this is a make table query. It has an exclamation point. That means I must run it. When I do that, then I have created the table. Look in your tables and you'll see there's the disco table. There is a caveat. Remember, when you're using the make table query, you'll probably want all the fields. And so you'll use the star. But whenever you use all the fields, you must uncheck any duplicate record. The next is the delete query. This is like using cut, only we can attach it to a button so we can do it all the time. In a delete query, we're going to take some of the records out of the table. So what we're doing is creating a revised version of that table. Remember we start with the select query and then we're going to change it to a delete query. The thing is that query that we just created, that make table query, has all the right information in it for our delete query. And you probably don't want to make a table more than once, so it might be a good idea to start from the make table query and turn that into a delete query. And you can see it says delete from products where discontinued is true. When you run it, you may get an error, and the error is because of the enforcer. That means that you can see here that one product has many orders. That means the products is a parent record, and I cannot delete a parent if I have children. So I must get rid of those children because those children without a parent is called an orphan and we don't want to create orphan records. So either delete the order details that are attached to discontinued products or you can uh, double click or right click on the, uh, the relationship and cascade delete. So that would be another option. But you just need to fix those orphan records before deleting the parent records. 
Third, we're going to look at the append query, and I think of this as a snowplow because I've never seen a snowplow working in Florida. <laughs> Why? Because there's no snow in Florida. However, I've seen them a lot in Denver. So if I wanted snow from Denver in Florida, I would have to start in Denver with a snowplow and push it down to, Dem uh, down to Florida. So that's essentially what we're doing with the append query. We're copying and pasting, but you must start where the snow is or where the records are. We've got a couple of options for our append query. Uh, if I want to undo a delete, then I would be pushing from or starting in the archive table and bringing it back to the original table. But my second option would be to continue archiving. So I might have uh, n new discontinued uh, products that I add all the time and I want to pull them out of the original table and put them in the archive table. So only you know which direction you want to go. But remember, you start where there's snow, wherever you want to move the records from. In this case, we want to undo a delete. We want to bring them back. We'll start with our select query. And in this case, I want to bring all of my disco products back. Now I could run a criteria and just find one specific product, but in this case we'll just say all of them. And then I turn it into an append query and it'll say what table do you want to push it to. Remember, we're pushing it from Disco back into Products. And again, we can pull it from another database as well. And then we'll say OK. What is the caveat with the append query? The snowplow. Remember to build the query based on where the data is, not where you want it to go. That's the second question. So the first question is where is the data now? We also have the update query, and I just want to quickly show you that. That is when you want to change the data. It's like a very powerful find and replace. Remember you start with a select query, and in this case we want to say update unit price, and notice here it says we want to take unit price and do something with it. We want to drop it. We're going to multiply it by 80% if the units in stock are greater than 10. The caveat is only show necessary fields. Do not put any other fields in here, just the ones that you're going to criteria on and those you're going to update. That's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, please click like. We'll see you next time. Bye.